Hi guys. I was going to upload this message yesterday, but then I got that email from Rachel Martin and I decided to put this video off another day. I want to thank all of you who have given to Rachel. There weren't as many volunteers as I had hoped, but anything is better than nothing, so thank you for your help. In Exodus 19, 4 through 6, God says to Moses, You yourselves have seen what I did to Egypt and how I carried you on eagle's wings and brought you to myself. Now if you obey me fully and keep my covenant, then out of all nations you will be my treasured possession. Although the whole earth is mine, you will be for me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. Though God was speaking to the Israelites after the Exodus, the same words are meant for the Gentile body of Christ. In 1 Peter 2.9, the church is also called a royal priesthood. But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation. God's special possession that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. This is the exact same sentiment of what he said to Israel. Then in Revelation 1.6 it says, And he has made us to be a kingdom, priest to his God and Father. To him be the glory and the dominion forever and ever. Amen. In Revelation 5.10, it says, You have made them to be a kingdom and priest to our God, and they will reign upon the earth. And in 1 Peter 2.5, we have, You also, as living stones, are being built up as a spiritual house for a holy priesthood, to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. In Revelation 20 and 6, we have, Blessed and holy is the one who has a part in the first resurrection. Over these, the second death has no power, but they will be priests of God and of Christ and will reign with him for a thousand years. Then in Romans fifteen sixteen, it says, To be a minister of Christ, Jesus, to the Gentiles, ministering as a priest the gospel of God, so that my offering of the Gentiles may become acceptable, sanctified by the Holy Spirit. Okay, so at this point, you should be understanding that the words spoken in Exodus 19, 4 through 6, are not just for the Jews, but also for the Gentile church. Many have had dreams of the rapture, and they have seen themselves being carried up to God upon eagle's wings. In Exodus 19, 4, that is exactly what God tells the Israelites, that he has carried them up to himself upon eagle's wings. But he says that if you obey him fully and keep his covenant, then you will be his treasured possession, and even though the entire earth belongs to him, the body of Christ shall be a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. In my last video, I told you that I had some explosive information for you that I have never heard anyone talk about. I have never heard anyone connect the dots together like I have in the scripture that I'm going to give you. I'm going to talk about the rapture, but I have to give you a disclaimer. I'm not saying that the rapture will happen at the time frame that I'm going to be talking about. I'm only saying that it is possible. I'm also not going to tell you that the Holy Spirit told me what I'm about to tell you, but I do believe that he has led me to a place of understanding. So moving forward, many in the church have compared the exodus of the Jews being rescued from Egypt to the rapture of the body of Christ from the dark and evil world that is likened to Egypt or Babylon. Perry Stone and Bill Cloud compared America to the kingdom of Egypt and former President Obama to Pharaoh. I believe that the Lord agrees with this. Another parallel to the rapture is in the event of Moses being called up upon the mountain of Sinai to receive the commandments of God. Firstly, I must say that Moses was a foreshadowing of Jesus. Though Jesus never sinned in any way, Moses was in the desert for 40 years after he fled Egypt. Jesus went into the desert for 40 days as he was tempted by Satan. Moses married a Gentile bride. Jesus will marry a Gentile bride. Moses rescued the Jews from Egyptian bondage and from a Pharaoh that was a type of Antichrist. Jesus will rescue the body of Christ from the bondage of the world, which is like Egypt, Babylon, and Rome all rolled into one, just before the Antichrist rises. Moses was called by God to be an intercessor between God and the Jews. Jesus is an intercessor between God and the body of Christ. Moses led the Israelites back to the Promised Land. 
Jesus will bring the body of Christ back with him to Israel, the promised land. Okay, so there are many similarities between Moses and Jesus. Just before Moses was called up upon the mountain, God spoke to Moses and said, Go to the people and consecrate them today and tomorrow. Have them wash their clothes and be ready by the third day, because on that day the Lord will come down on Mount Sinai in the sight of all the people. For the last few months, the Lord has called many in the body of Christ to prepare the body of Christ by telling them to purify and cleanse themselves of all worldliness so that they may be holy. In Exodus 19, 10-11, God is telling Moses to prepare the people by consecrating them and washing their clothes or garments. To wash something is to cleanse or purify it. So what God is telling Moses here is the exact same thing that the Lord is telling the body of Christ right now. But why are the people to be cleansed and purified? So that they may be made ready because the Lord is coming down upon the sight of all the people. In Exodus 19.13, God says, Only when the ram's horn sounds a long blast may they go up to the mountain. Then in verse 16, the scripture says, On the morning of the third day, there was, a, there was thunder and lightning with a thick cloud over the mountain and a very loud trumpet blast. And in verse 19, the scripture says, And the sound of the trumpet grew louder and louder. In 1 Thessalonians 4:16 through 17 Paul says, For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trumpet call of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. After that, we who are still alive and are left will be caught up with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so we will be with the Lord forever. 1 Corinthians 15.52 says, In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised imperishable, and we shall be changed. In the Bible, trumpets are sounded for many different things. Mostly, the trumpet is sounded to get people's attention. In Exodus 19, 1 Thessalonians 4, and in 1 Corinthians 15, the trumpet is sounded to gather the people. In Exodus 19, verses 13, 16, and 19, we are given the indication that the trumpet call of God is a loud and long blast. In verses 16 and 18, the trumpet blast was so loud that it caused the people to tremble and it caused the mountain to tremble, which tells me that it caused an earthquake. In Jewish tradition, on the first day of the seventh month, they celebrate a day called the Feast of Trumpets, also called Rosh Hashanah where a hundred trumpets are blown, and each one blows a little longer and louder than the last. The very last trumpet that is blown blows the loudest and longest, and they call this the Tekiya Gedola, because many people have connected the 19th chapter of Exodus as well as 1 Thessalonians 4 and 1 Corinthians 15 to the Feast of Trumpets. They believe that the rapture will occur at the Feast of Trumpets. However, the event in Exodus 19 did not take place at the Feast of Trumpets. If we go back to Exodus 19.1, we see that Moses and the Israelites come, came to the desert of Sinai three months after they exited Egypt, to the very day. Remember that they exited Egypt right after the Passover, most likely within a day or two later. Passover is on the 14th or 15th day of the first month on the Jewish calendar. This is the month of Nisan, or some call it the month of Abib. So then you have to calculate 90 days, or three complete months from Passover, and then add a day or two, because we don't know the exact day that they left. Then God came down upon the people three days after that, because remember that he told Moses to prepare the people by washing their garments and to consecrate them so that they would be ready. If we see this 19th chapter of Exodus paralleling the rapture, then we can calculate the date from the Passover this year, add three months and approximately three to five days, and where we end up in 2018 is the week of America's Independence Day. Okay, I know that many of you knew that the 19th chapter of Exodus paralleled with the rapture, and that was not my explosive information. My explosive information is two things. Number one, everyone who is paralleling the rapture with the Feast of Trumpets is wrong. The parallel is with Exodus 19. 
And two, by adding together the time when Moses and the Israelites left Egypt to the time that they reached the Sinai Desert, and two, the time Moses was called up on the mountain, you end up around America's Independence Day. So here's why I believe that we could be raptured at this time. Firstly, Independence Day is a day of liberation from the control of the authority that used to be over you. You could say that the rapture is like Independence Day because the body of Christ is being liberated from worldly powers who are trying to suppress the authority of God. It was exactly the same thing at the Exodus when the Israelites were liberated from their bondage as slaves to the Egyptians. Independence Day means freedom, and the body of Christ will be freed from the evil powers that desire to control us. Secondly, if you believe that America is Mystery Babylon, then it would make sense that America would come to its destruction in one hour on the very day that it was given independence from the British authority where it came from. I'm not saying that this is definitely when the rapture is going to happen, but it's something to consider. It's just as good of a theory as the rapture occurring on Passover, Pentecost, or Feast of Trumpets. And if it occurred on America's Independence Day, it would most definitely be unexpected. I stopped looking for the rapture dates at Passover. But as I was beginning to read the Bible for the day, I was only reading for maybe 10 minutes. And when I came to Exodus 19, I felt the urge to look up the third month on the Jewish calendar and found that it is the month of Sivan. But then I realized that Moses and the Israelites came to the Sinai Desert three months after Passover, not in the third month. By this time, it would actually be in the fourth month. Then after I did the calculations and came to the 4th of July on the secular calendar, my, my mind was like, wow. Instantly I made the connection. Again, I'm not saying that the 4th of July is when the rapture is going to happen. I'm just saying it's worth considering. As I've told you all, the Holy Spirit has had a lot to say lately, and it seems to me that what he's had to say has been about stuff going on right now or stuff that will come in the very near future, and I believe the next month is a very high watch time. Normally, I'd be saying between now and September or October is a high watch time, but from what the Lord has told me in previous years, the rapture will not occur on the Feast of Trumpets. That is just a road marker of sorts. The Lord has reminded me, year after year, for the past three years, that he will come when everyone thinks not, when everyone is going about their lives, doing their everyday thing. That is another reason why I think it is possible that he may come on the 4th of July. I know that I've heard people talk about having rapture dreams where they've seen fireworks, and I honestly don't believe we'll be waiting until the latter part of the year before things in this world begin to break forth, but I guess we'll see. I love you, brothers and sisters. Don't get discouraged and don't lose hope. The Lord is coming and our rewards are coming too. Be patient with the Lord. He's trying to have mercy upon those who aren't ready yet. There's a lot of lukewarm believers and there's a lot of people who haven't surrendered to Jesus yet. I'm not saying he's going to wait on all of them, but he is trying to get as many saved as possible. Have compassion upon these people and be patient with the Lord. It is not his desire that any should perish. It breaks his heart knowing that many are not going to get a second chance. Remember that when we get raptured, destruction is going to fall upon those who are left behind. Many are going to die right at the start of the tribulation, and I mean millions. Trust in Jesus and believe that he knows what he is doing. I hope you had a great Memorial Day, and I hope to see you in the Father's house soon. God bless you, and Shalom.